Hello viewers and subscribers to this channel. In this video I will explain how to install and use Stable Diffusion in Python. Stable Diffusion is truly amazing machine learning software that is used to convert text descriptions such as the one that you can see over here to images that you can see over here. To illustrate the enormous power of Stable Diffusion here are some images that I generated from text descriptions. For example, the text is tree with a house during sunset and here are two images. I will zoom in such that you can see them better. Then here is the next image or the series of images. The text is a river with a boat and a mountain in the background and here are the images. And finally, these images are generated from this text, Roman soldier with Viking. To illustrate you how easy it is to use this amazing machine learning environment, with this command line I will generate an image. So I'm calling a Python script that's called text to images and here I enter the text description for example I can enter something like this horse with a dog and tree and I execute this command line and it's going to take maybe 30 seconds or maybe up to a minute to generate an image or better to say a series of images and after the process is completed, you will get this screen with this message. Your samples are ready and waiting for you here. And the folder name is Outputs Text to Images Samples. And of course, you get this nice message, Enjoy. So let's find that folder. Here's the folder and here are the images. So this is the first image. This is the second one. This is basically the third one, fourth one, and the fifth, fifth one. Before I start with the explanation of the installation procedure, I have to mention the following. Basically, in order to smoothly use the stable diffusion, you will need to have a relatively powerful GPU. I tested stable diffusion on two GPUs that I have at my home. The first one is NVIDIA 390 24GB of memory and stable diffusion runs smoothly on this GPU. The next one is NVIDIA 2060 Super with 8 GB of memory and I had issues running Stable Diffusion on this GPU. To the best of my understanding the main model neck is in memory since this card has only 8 GB of memory and in order to run Stable Diffusion on this GPU I had to significantly decrease the image resolution and eventually I was not satisfied with the quality of images. Another workaround solution for running Stable Diffusion on GPUs with smaller amount of memory is to use an optimized algorithm. Apparently, there is an optimized version of Stable Diffusion that I didn't test and this version can run on GPUs that have, let's say, 8 or 6 GB of memory. In the sequel, I will explain how to install Stable Diffusion. In order to make this video accessible to broad audience, I will assume that you have a limited knowledge of Python, Anaconda and Git. So, the first step is to install Anaconda. Anaconda is basically the most popular open source Python distribution platform. Anaconda contains a very useful set of tools for coding in Python and creating machine learning libraries. So we'll click on download and we will save the file. The installation of Anaconda is pretty much straightforward and I will just briefly go over all the steps. Okay, so we have to wait a little bit and here is our file. We double click, we click on next, we click on agree. Here I will install for all users. Yes, 
you go next install and this will take a while after some time we obtain this window over here we click on next you click on next and I will deselect these two items and click on finish okay now anaconda is installed in order to verify that we can just type anaconda and this navigator will pop up let's see what will happen now is everything fine initializing and here it is okay so here's our anaconda it contains several programs for us the most useful will be this one over here the next step is to install git here we will select the proper version since i'm using 64-bit machine and windows i will click over here and i will click on save and i go to my download folder and here is git i double click i click on yes and i will just use standard settings here I'll not change anything. Next, 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 and let us wait for this window to complete. Almost done. And I will dislike this and finish. The next step is to install Stable Diffusion. So we go to the website or to the GitHub page of Stable Diffusion. A link will be provided in the description below, so don't worry about it. We click on Code, we click on Download Zip, and we save the file. Then we open the download folder. We basically can double click to access all the files and folders. Here I will click on assets, hold shift key until here, do control C, then I will click on my C and I will open a folder that will be called stable diffusion. Then I will click on that folder and I will paste all the files. So what I actually did, I extracted the content of the zip file over here. The next step is to download model weights. For that purpose, we need to visit this website. A link to this website will be provided in the description below. And here we need to find our stable diffusion version. I will click on this version over here. And over here we need to access the repository. And before logging in, you have to sign up for the account. So basically, you can join the Hugging Face website. You need to set up account, putting email address, password, some information about you. However, I did this before, so I will enter my username and I will enter the password. Of course, you will not see my password since it's masked and I will log in. And over here, we need to download this file. This file cont contains all the weights we need for running Stable Diffusion. So I will click over here, I will save it on my disk and this process will take a while since this is a 4 GB file. Once the download process is completed, we need to copy this file to appropriate folder. So I will click on this file, Control C to copy this file and I need to find appropriate folder and the appropriate folder is located inside of my stable fusion folder that I created so I click on stable fusion I click on models then I click over here and here I need to create appropriate folder for my file I will create a new folder and change the name of the folder to stable diffusion version 1 and I just need to copy the file to that folder 
and then I need to change the name of the file. I need to call the file model.ckpt. Now the installation process is complete and we can start running stable diffusion. I click on start, I type anaconda navigator, I open the navigator, it will take a while and hopefully we will not have issues running the navigator. Let's wait a while, okay, here it is. And we run command prompt. I click on launch. And here I can, for example, adjust the colors so you can see my screen better. I can do something like this and hopefully now you can see this command prompt a little bit better. Next, we need to navigate to our stable diffusion folder. And over here I'll do once more and I execute this command line, then I type cd stable diffusion and here's the content of my folder. The next step is to create a Conda environment for executing stable diffusion. And this can be achieved by using this command line. We'll basically create a Conda environment with the dependencies defined in this file environment.yaml. So let's see the content of that file. So basically I will navigate to my stable diffusion folder and I will open a notepad in order to see the content of that file. Here I will select all files and I will click over here. So over here we can see all the dependencies, we can see Python version, CUDA toolkit, PyTorch, TorchVision. Let us now execute this command line and see what will happen. So this process generally takes a significant amount of time since we need to basically download all the libraries that we need to run stable diffusion. Okay, so basically after 10 minutes the process is completed and I will write conda activate LDM to activate the environment and we are now ready to generate images from text. So what I will do right now, I will write this command and here is the explanation. So basically I'm executing the Python script located in the folder scripts and the name of the file is text to imagesphyton and here I specify the parameter prompt which means that I enter the text through a command line and I can enter the text over here. The last parameter, parameter is not of interest for the time being and I will not explain this parameter. So let's generate an image, let's say photograph of a computer on a table and let's run this and let's see what will happen. So we, are, we should see basically a photograph of a computer sitting on a table or we should see a photograph of a computer somewhere near the table. Let's see what will happen right now. Okay, a very nice thing and, and very interesting thing is to open the task manager and to look into basically CPU usage over here. Basically, you can see how much GPU and CPU is being used. We can see basically that here the GPU is starting to run and you can maybe see the fan of my GPU and it's going to take maybe I guess like maybe a minute or 30 seconds to generate the image or the, you will see a series of images okay so we are done it maybe took 30 seconds to generate the images and basically images are stored over here outputs text images samples so let's find that folder we need to open stable diffusion and we need to find the basically the proper folder so here are the outputs text images samples and here are our samples wow really impressive this is the first this is the second third one fourth one fifth one 
this image is super impressive look at this this is really amazing congratulations to people who made this software this software is really amazing let us now more closely analyze the command we executed basically we executed the script called text to image .python, and let's find that script so we need to open the stable diffusion folder and basically we need to find scripts and basically here is the here is basically the script it's called text to images so let's open the notepad file in order to see what this script is actually doing okay so here's the python script we are importing some libraries basically we are also importing opencv a torch pytorch numpy some other libraries we are defining some fun functions over here and here's our some form probably of a main function doing something and yeah looks pretty much clean the code looks pretty much clean it doesn't look so complex and you can basically start developing your own software by using this code over here before I end this video I have to mention one very important thing basically I tested the same code on a GPU that has 8 gigabyte of RAM this, G this GPU is basically NVIDIA 2060 Super and I was not able to run this code now there is a trick that you can use in order to run this code on GPU with smaller amount of memory and that trick is basically to, to reduce the image size or image resolution basically I think the default image uh, height and width are 512 by 512 basically you can play these parameters by specifying uh, something like this let's do this 256 that will be the width and this should be the height and let's see the result now again we are running everything from the beginning we can analyze the memory consumption over here and probably I can immediately see over here that less memory is being used and we can wait for the result okay we can observe that the process is much faster maybe two times faster and this process will basically ensure that less memory is being consumed so let's look and look at our result I can immediately see that basically the images are not very good for example I don't like this image and this one is kind of weird okay however this is a workaround solution in order to basically run this code on GPUs with smaller amount of RAM memory as I mentioned at the beginning of this video another solution is to load or to install an optimized version of stable fusion however I'm not going to cover this in this video that would be all for today I hope that you like this video if you like the videos I create please pr press the like and subscribe buttons thank you very much and have a nice day